Hi, I'm Michael Byrne. Like any other tile installation material, there's a right and a wrong way to do things. Yes, you can punch a hole in a backer board with a hammer. But in this segment, I'm going to show you how to fabricate and install boards like a professional. You can cut fiber cement boards with a high speed dry cutting blade, but you'll be creating a lot of dust. Scoring and snapping and shearing take less time than the dry blade and are easier on the environment. For cutting blind and irregular openings, I use low speed tools and bimetal blades and core bits, a strategy that reduces airborne dust. If you are installing board every day, the power shear will reduce the energy you would otherwise expend on scoring and snapping. The key to a successful installation of any tile backer is to ensure the structure is built to reasonable tolerances. Flat, level, and plumb to within a quarter inch and ten feet is the minimum standard. I prefer an eighth inch and ten feet for twelve inch tiles and even tighter for tiles over eighteen inches. Temporary nails are a good way to maintain the required gap between boards. Manufacturers allow the use of hot dip galvanized roofing nails, but I prefer backer board screws, which are tough to work with. But instead of fighting with the screws though, I first set them with a hammer. It's very important to install the right screws. Inch and a quarter long screws are used to attach quarter inch boards only. Half inch boards require one and five eighths inch and longer if the boards are spaced off the studs. Regular or galvanized bugle head screws, appropriate for gypsum drywall, are the wrong choice since they are not self-countersinking and not strong enough to dimple FCBs, nor do they have the required holding power. Even under the best of conditions, I still go through plenty of bits when working with backer board screws. If it is difficult to get the heads flush on wall installations, I try longer screws, and if that does not work, I may be forced to pre-countersink. Flush heads are not critical if only tiles are to be installed, but if a membrane follows, the surface should be as smooth as possible. For long life, I prefer to use solid carbide countersinks, available through machine shop supply outlets. Temporary nails are a good way to maintain the required gap between boards. To reinforce the seams, it's important to use alkali resistant tape, and because backer boards don't have a tapered edge, I hold off installing the tape until each seam is about to be covered with tile. To reduce leaks in wet area corners where a membrane is not used, I install a flexible mesh tape made specifically for this purpose.
The idea is not to laminate the board to the pan, but to eliminate air between the backer boards and the face of the pan. Since the gap varies, the process is trial and error and involves trying the application to ensure the right amount is applied. This technique works best when the pan material itself has been laminated to its backing, not just stapled. The layer of thinset mortar is more for support than a glue. Walking on the board helps properly seat it. I hope you've picked up some useful tips and techniques from this segment and I invite you to check out the others in the series.